Today on our 2019 Thor Motorhome, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Rear Sway Bar. Now our motorhomes are big squares that are known to be top heavy, which can be really difficult to drive straight down the road, especially on those windy days or on that bumpy terrain. Well, that's where the rear sway bar is going to come into play. It's going to help stiffen up that chassis and help eliminate that sway in the motorhome, making it a lot easier to keep in a straight line and drive without worrying too much. Now, since the sway bar is in the back, it's really only going to help combat that sway here in the rear of the camper. Would I help offset that and do the same thing up front? I'd recommend the Roadmaster front anti-sway bar. Now let's go ahead and take our motorhome on the test course. We're going to first start by going over our bumps to see how it does. We go over our first few bumps. You can really feel that motorhome just getting thrown around. It feels like the top is just going to push us off to the side. The steering wheel is pretty loose. I'm actually getting some stuff thrown around in the back. Now we'll go ahead and go through our slalom course, do some evasive maneuvering. And right away on the first turn, you can really feel it's pretty bad. I couldn't imagine having to do this on an actual open road and not just on a test course. I mean, I personally really want to have to fight it every time I went on vacation. I just want to be pleasant. Now I went ahead and placed our factory sway bar next to our new one. And even visually, you can tell that there's going to be an improvement. The Roadmaster sway bar is much thicker in diameter compared to the factory style one. It's going to be stronger, beefier, and perform much better. And you're even going to be able to tell a difference in the bushings. The Roadmaster bushings are a much needed improvement over the factory style ones. And that's because the factory style ones are much smaller and actually made out of rubber compared to the Roadmaster ones, which are larger, made from polyurethane, which are going to perform better and not to mention last much longer than the rubber ones. So really what that boils down to is the Roadmaster sway bar is going to handle the weight and size of your motorhome much better than that factory one can. Here's what the rear sway bar is going to look like once it's completely installed. Now as we mentioned, it's a lot thicker and beefier than that factory one, which is going to give us a lot more performance. It's going to be made from 4140 chromoly steel, so it's going to be very strong. And as far as the diameter of the bar or the thickness, it's going to be an inch and a half. Even the sway bar end links are going to be an upgrade over our factory ones. They're going to be much thicker and they're also going to have polyurethane bushings. Now since this is essentially a direct replacement, it's not going to be all that difficult to get installed. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be working underneath the motorhome right in front of our rear axle. The first thing that we're going to do is remove our end link bolt from the top of our frame rail. So the end link is actually going to be at the end of our sway bar. And then if we follow it up, we'll find a single bolt that attaches it to the frame. We're going to take that off using a 15 millimeter. Now if you follow the sway bar back, we're going to find here where our bushing is, where it attaches to our rear axle. Now we need to remove these bolts that secure it to the axle. So we're going to have one bolt on each side, and we're going to take those out using a 17 millimeter. Now what I like to do is completely remove one of them, but leave the other one in just hand tight because the other side is set up the exact same way and we remove that hardware, there's going to be nothing holding our sway bar in place. So by leaving one end just hand tight, that's going to help support that sway bar and make it easier to manage while we're lowering it down. 
Now I went ahead and repeated that same process over on the other side. And now at this point, we can hold our sway bar steady and remove those two hand tight bolts. That way we can completely lower it and take it out from underneath the vehicle. Well, the sway bar itself is relatively heavy. It does have a little bit of weight to it, so if it makes you feel more comfortable, it wouldn't be a bad idea to ask for an extra set of hands to help you lower this. With all the hardware out though, we can slowly let it down and slide it out from underneath our motor home. So now we can grease our bushings up and get those installed. So what we do is take the included grease. We just want to liberally apply it to the inside of our bushing where it's going to wrap around our sway bar. And this will help prevent any squeaks or uh, loud noises. So once you have that bushing completely coated, nice and good, what we'll do is then place it over the sway bar. We'll kind of hold it in half. Push it around the sway bar. Then one thing I like to do is just with a little bit of leftover grease, just lightly coat the inside of our bracket. That's kind of that extra step we can take to help prevent any squeaks. And it don't take a whole lot on the outside. Once that's covered, just simply push that over our new bushing. I'm gonna use that same technique to do the other bushing. All right, now we went ahead and put our sway bar back up into position using those factory mounting points. Now I do wanna point out it is pretty heavy and a little awkward so an extra set of hands is very useful when trying to get this lined up and put back in place. Now we secured it using the factory hardware however we had to add one thing and that's a flat washer that comes included and what you're going to want to do is take the included red Loctite and put a couple drops on the threads for all the hardware that we're going to use to not only secure our sway bar but everything else. So once that's done, just thread that in and snug everything down for now. Now we're going to take our end leaks and loosely connect them to our sway bar. So what we're going to do is take one of our bolts followed by a flat washer We'll take that from the outside, run it through that end link. We're going to take another flat washer, put that on the bolt. We'll go ahead and bring that through our sway bar. Then we'll go ahead and put another flat washer on it and a nylon lock nut. Now we're just going to get this finger tight for now. And once it's like this, we can repeat that same process on the other side. Now to secure the top side of your end links, there's a few things you would do. You'd first make sure that your sway bar itself is parallel to the ground. And then you would take your end link and get it as vertical as possible. Now, once you're in that position, what you do is push it up against the side of the frame make a mark and then you would drill a hole into the side of the frame to allow a bolt to pass through. However, ours is not going to allow us to do that completely. Since we have some bracketry right here, that's going to be in the way of allowing our end links to sit perfectly vertical and flush against the frame. So what we're going to do is actually just use the factory hole that's already pre-drilled into the frame and that'll work just fine. So I'm gonna take our factory bolt and a flat washer, pass that through our end link, and on the other side of that end link, I'll again take a flat washer and put that through our bolt. We can line that bolt up with the factory hole in our frame. 
and get it threaded down. Now with all of our hardware in place, we can torque it all down to the specification that we found in our instructions. Now with our sway bar installed, let's go ahead and take it on the test course. We'll first start by going over our bumps. And right away, I can tell a big difference. They're not nearly getting tossed around as much. Everything inside of the camper is staying more secure. And overall, the motorhome just feels like it's more planted and safe to drive. So now we'll go ahead and go through our solemn course to do some evasive maneuvering. As we get up to speed, we'll go ahead and cut our wheels and see how she does. And I can tell you right now, this is where the sway bar really shines. is isn't leaning nearly as much. I have full control of the steering wheel. And overall, we just feel like we're playing it a lot better to the ground. And then we'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster rear sway bar on our 2019 Thor Motorhome.